how to make a gooseberry jam. Well, the one thing about gooseberries is that they are packed full of pectin. So, in terms of getting the jam to set, this should be an easy job. But what I've done is I've measured out two kilos of gooseberries that I picked a couple of days ago. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to that, just enough to stop the ketchup on the bottom of the pan when we heat it up. Obviously the gooseberries were topped and tailed beforehand. That was a job I sat down on the settee and watched the television to do, because otherwise it would have been the most boring job. Once they've come up to the boil, let them simmer until all the fruit has pulped. Once it's all pulped, add a kilo of sugar for every kilo of fruit you started with. Then give it a good stir and bring it back to the boil. Once it's come up to heat, keep it on a rolling boil until you get to the setting point. So to check for the setting point, put a dollop of jam on a saucer like that and it, as you can see it's already setting on there. It's forming a nice thick skin. That means it's ready to go into hot sterilised jars. So we have eight jars of gooseby jam. Now some jam makers actually add a lot more sugar to gooseby jam than I do to uh, balance out the, um, the tartness of the fruit. Um, as you can see there's sort of scrapings at the bottom there. So, um, but I think this is much better has quite a tart jam. It's a bit like um, overdoing the sugar on lemon marmalade to try and mask the, um, the tartness of the lemon. Um, the whole point of <laughs> the whole point is that you it is meant to be tart. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to put more sugar in, but personally I wouldn't because uh, I think this is great mm, as it is. <laughs> 